when it's dry and ready, then cradle I shall play. It has a lovely body with legs so short and thin. When when it is so tired, it drops and then I win. Oh, dreidel, 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 I made it out of clay. And when it's dry and ready, then dreidel I shall play. Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Pineapple and today I am building a Hanukkah themed house. If you're interested in this build, you can download it off of the gallery. My origin ID is PineappleYT. I will be leaving both um, the snow mod version of this um, and the CC free version on the gallery. That way, you know, it's maybe a little bit easier for you guys to find. Um, so yeah, I would just like to start off uh, with a little disclaimer that I am not Jewish, um, I'm not culturally Jewish, I'm not religiously Jewish, uh, I just, you know, kind of wanted to do a build, um, just because December can get to be such a Christmas-centric month, you know, it's kind of like December 1st hits and then the world is Christmas, and <laughs> And it's a little weird and I did a build like this last year and I got a lot of really positive feedback and I've I still get I still been getting some like recent feedback like just last week on that build of people being really pleased to see um, their religion and their culture represented uh, so, especially in this time of year where it's just kind of like Christmas everywhere um, <laughs> I'm also not Christian I'm basically agnostic leaning towards atheist, I think. I don't know. I don't really focus on it. F yeah. <laughs> For me, I just feel like all religions are valid. And so, yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, talking about religion on the internet is always very touchy and makes me nervous. But here we are. This house is based off of a real life house um, in Port Townsend. If you've been following my channel for a bit, you know that for the Brindleton Bays collab, I did um, a Victorian um, Port Townsend house. I recreated one, and so I did this again here. And um, this one, uh, I don't know what I was going to say. I lost my train of thought. Excuse me, I'm a little bit ill. <laughs> Which is hilarious because last year when I recorded that Hanukkah build, I was also like recovering from a cold. And so now I just feel like for all intents and purposes, like to the internet, I'm just perpetually ill. Like I've just, I always have a cold, apparently. <laughs> I don't like, but that's what it seems like. <sighs> My goodness. But, um... Port Townsend build. It actually looks really similar from the front to that build. Um, I had no pictures of the back. It's just a build that, or it's just a house that I found in Port Townsend that I thought was really cute, and so I'd recreate it in The Sims. Um, I do end up putting this in uh, Brindleton Bay, and I know, <laughs> I feel like everyone is kind of sick of like blue houses in Brindleton Bay, but the kind of like traditional-ish colors for Hanukkah are um, like silver, white, and blue, so I decided to go strong with the blue theme. <laughs> no, well, actually, though, seriously, though, the interior is like so blue. Um, I like the floors are blue. I, I was mm, nervous about that, but I finally was just like, okay, you best suck it up because this blue color looks nice and you're just gonna have to make it work. <laughs> no, actually, that's actually what I did. Okay, um, yeah. <laughs> But, so you might ask, what makes this um, build sort of Hanukkah themed? Uh, you saw in the intro that there's like a menorah out front, there's a menorah a couples inside, but I feel like my favorite part about this build is a kosher kitchen. And so once we get there, I'll get a little bit more into what um, makes something kosher and what makes a kosher kitchen. But that was like, honestly, my favorite part. It was so good, especially because last year when I did the Hanukkah build, I totally forgot about that. And I did a very half-hearted attempt at the last minute to make a kosher kitchen. So we did it. We did it. Hopefully. We hopefully did it right this time. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, but here you can see, you're probably wondering why I'm not actually in Brindleton Bay. And that's because I started this house. Oh my gosh back before the um, Cats and Dogs Setback came out. So it's it's been sitting on the back burner for a while, and so I finally like kind of rejuvenated it for this build, and I'm really excited. I'm really excited about it, because this is such a cute house, and I love the layout. It's not really a type of layout I've done before, but I, I feel like it feels like a real house layout. I don't know. Um, 
<laughs> but right now I'm just working on the exterior. Oh, oh I'm finally, <laughs> and now I'm in Brindleton Bay. Um, oh, also, mm, before I forget, you might also be wondering, where is all that beautiful snow I saw in the intro? Or you might even be wondering, how can I get that snow? Has The Sims come out with a Seasons expansion pack without me noticing? No, they haven't. It's a mod. It's the snow mod. I'll leave a link to it down below. It's by Sim Cookie. Um, and oh my gosh, he is brilliant. He's recolored so many objects for this. Um, but basically, it's a mod. You um, can, his website has instructions for how to download it. And then my one tip is make sure that you unzip the packages because otherwise they won't work in your game. That's a question I've been asked a couple times and it's something that I personally was very confused by the first time I started like doing CC. So that's my tip to you, uh, <laughs> free of charge, I guess. <laughs> oh my goodness. But so that's, that's the snow. It's oh, so pretty. My own, my one complaint with the snow mod is that there are a couple of benches that go missing when you place them down. And um, I've been told by people smarter than me that you can just batch fix your CC and that should make it better. But I am lazy. And I just decided I won't use benches or those particular benches. So that's where we're at. I mean, <laughs> oh, the levels of laziness, but that's actually why this build is a little bit late getting out. Uh, it's because I was waiting for that snow mod to do the landscaping because uh, I just thought I would make this build look really cute. Uh, so, but luckily it's going to be out before Hanukkah is over. Um, Hanukkah is an eight day celebration. And so I think it'll, this will either be out on Sunday or Monday. So there'll either be like two or three days left in the celebration. So that's exciting. Um, I, if you don't know what Hanukkah is, I will tell you. So basically, um, it comes from this sort of, um, I think story, I guess is the word, like not like, you know, but like, like a, a verse or something. And, uh, sorry, I'm terrible at this. Please excuse me. Um, I'm sorry if I'm butchering anything. I really do apologize. Feel free to kindly tell me in the comment section down below if I've gotten anything wrong. I'm just looking at Wikipedia like a true millennial. Um, but yeah, so anyways, um, basically the Greeks defiled um, a Jewish sanctuary and they kind of like defiled the oil. I guess they maybe like spilled it or took like stole it or burned it or you know that sort of stuff. And so there ended up being um, only enough oil to last for one day of burning. But the miracle was that it lasted for eight days. And so that's where the um, eight days come into place. It also has to do with um, seven is a pretty um, good, um, not necessarily lucky, but like maybe more like blessed number um, in the Jewish religion. So yeah, I, th I think that's pretty cool. Very cool. Um, and so the menorah that, you know, the eight candles that you light, it's um, supposed to be lit after dark, which I, I, I should have done my research. I, I did research before I did this build. I didn't read research before I did the intro because the menorahs are all lit all the time. So sorry about that. But they're technically supposed to be lit after dark, um, preferably in a place where people can see them, especially like windows. Uh, they can also be placed in... Um, with kind of like near doorways, and then they're on the left side um, of the doorway because the menzuza is on the right side. And I will talk about that a little bit later on because I did add some of those into the build. Um, but here is the living room, gorgeous windows. Um, I cut out all, <laughs> like, I, I know, I was like, oh, you guys, I love this layout so much. I just cut it all out. I didn't even film it. Um, my builds have just gotten so long lately that I've just... I can't. <laughs> like, I, mm, mm. yeah. YouTube's made me a little bit anxious lately, so we're just, we're just running with whatever I can manage right now. So I apologize if anything isn't quite up to par, but that's where we're at. But um, I tried to um, go again, like, with this blue theme, like, those blue floors, I honestly can't believe I pulled it off. I, well, I think I pulled it off. I don't know. You tell me. Um, but I, um, 
I have the blue floors and mostly like really bright white walls and to sort of cut through that I added the dark brown like furniture like wood furniture and so that's cool but here we are at my favorite part the kosher kitchen yes I did some research on this and it was so so interesting um, it's very complex I probably won't cover all of the rules but I'll try to get the gist of it and the basics and what I'm doing um, right now here you can see I'm picking out two cupboards for dishes um, and that's because in for kosher kind of basically boils down to you do not want your dairy and your meats to touch and so you kind of have to have two of everything so that's why I have those two different cupboards it's because we have two sets of plates we have the plates for the dairy and we have the plates for the meat and I don't just mean you know straight up milk and a straight up piece of like beef I mean any foods that touch or contain those things so like if you have a cutting board and you cut cheese on it and then you go cut an onion on it, the onion is now considered dairy and it cannot be used in a meat dish. So it it kind of depends on how strict people are when they follow this. It kind of depends on their lifestyle, their um, devotion, their funds, you know, how hectic their lifestyle is, all those things, lots of factors. So, but a true kosher kitchen should kind of have two of everything. This one does, except for the refrigerator, because um, from what I saw online, it seemed like that one was more okay, and I purposely picked a refrigerator with two doors. So, like, the idea is that there's a divide, one side is dairy and one side is meat, that sort of thing. But um, to kind of make the distinction you know, more visible, they will often um, color code things. And it's not usually like two different like cabinet types. Usually it's like little labels. But I, you know, we don't really have little labels. So I separated out, you know, the cabinet and the counter. So they're completely different. Um, kind of still following the same color scheme. But we have two stoves and we have two dishwashers and we have two sinks. And the sinks are stainless steel because that I think is maybe not the only metal but it's like the easiest metal to kosher and when I say to kosher it's to kind of it's like a special cleaning process I think it involves salt maybe don't quote me on any of this but especially not on that um but yeah so I kind of tried to pick a stainless steel um sink and so if you don't like um some people will cook kosher and they will only have you know one stove or one dishwasher and so a lot of people We'll have one stove and they'll be like, okay, I have an oven, you know, stove combo. This is pretty expensive. I can't afford a second one. So I'm going to get a portable burner and I'll cook my dairy on that. Um, or some people think it's okay to cook even at the same time dairy and meat on the same stove if you keep them as separated as possible and you're not allowed to open both lids at the same time because um, there's potential for cross-contamination there. So it really all just depends on the person and how, you know, strict they are. But I just, ugh, I found it so fascinating. Honestly, like, it's it was so interesting to me. Um, and I just really enjoyed learning about that. So I thought I would share that all with you guys. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah. <laughs> here are those two cabinets like I said um and I had I, I spent a lot of time trying to pick them out because I <laughs> I really wish we just had like um for some of the swatches the dishes change colors but not for all of them so <clears throat> I didn't I wanted the, the difference to be obvious so anyways whew, that was a really long talk that's where we're at. <laughs> um, some of the things that kind of also make Hanukkah Hanukkah is like the sort of tradition of eating oil-based foods like um, latkes and also the, like the dreidel game, like the song. It's like the dreidel game, it's basically just like a gambling game, um, I think, yeah. And you use dreidels and it's, I've never played it, but you know pretty fun. So from here on out, um, oh, except for the mezuzahs, everything else is pretty like standard. Um, also, by the way, I don't think that all Jewish homes have this color scheme. Uh, this was just like purely like, oh, we're going all out here. <laughs> kind of like how like, you know, I made a Christmas home and like not everyone who celebrates Christmas has a red and green home all the time every day. That would be well, some people do. Some people are so into Christmas. I've never quite understood that. Like, 
they're like really into Christmas. I'm more of the, I still have my Halloween decorations up, guys. It's December 17th. Um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, but anyways, one of the weird things I've noticed in my builds is remember how a while back I talked about how creepy I find those cat and dog, like giant stuffed animals. I've had them in every single build since, and I don't really know what's wrong with me, but, like, every single build, I'm like, yeah, this goes here now, and I almost feel like I've been, like, infected or something, and, like, I am compelled to use them. I'm a little frightened, <laughs> but every single build I've had, I think, pretty much, I've used this cat and dog plushies, um, but here's a little office, nothing too exciting, uh, it, I love the layout, it, this, these doors lead to the outside, I love, like, how many doors there are, it's, it's all very pretty, and I'm gonna die, sorry, I'm like, oh gosh, mm. Mm. my throat all of a sudden is, like, catching, and I don't want to have to cut out me coughing, so, you know, but... I'll tell a fun little story because I ran out of things to talk about. So it's been a while since I talked about yoga. I've still been doing it. Um, I had a fun moment by fun. I mean, incredibly awkward where <laughs> um, I went to a class on like in the evening. It was a 715 at night class. And I had never been to that class before. I'd never been to that studio. I, I had been to the studio, but not at, like in that evening time, only ever in the morning. And so I show up at seven o'clock and the whole studio is dark. <laughs> the, the door's locked. It doesn't look like anybody is in there. And I'm kind of just like, um, and so I'm like, well, you know, maybe you know, nobody's here yet. And I was like, but there is a class before this one. And I was so confused. And so I just kind of stood there and I waited and I kind of waited and, you know, I looked, you know, and I was kind of waiting for somebody to come and like open the door. And then finally somebody does come. She walks right past me, walks right through the open door into a room full of 12 people and it's all very well lit and there is no other entrance in the studio. And I was just like, where did all these people come from? Oh my gosh. And then I realized that they were all in final Shavasana, which is um, the very end. You kind of like lie down and kind of relax after like the practice. And so it was just really jarring to like be standing outside of a room with nobody in it with only one entrance. And then when you turn around, there's like 17 people. <laughs> it's like, where did they all come from? Oh my gosh. Also, speaking of tons of people, <laughs> my boyfriend and I went out to eat and we went to this, like, it's just like a little Thai restaurant, kind of, you know, mom and pop style. There's, mm, you know, like 10 tables in there, you know, and all the tables are pretty small. Like the most they can see is six people and that's pushing it, like really pushing it. And so when we go in, there's only one other group of people eating in this restaurant and there's only one waiter. <laughs> There's only one waiter, and so we sit down, you know, we order, we, we, you know, start to get ready, and then all of a sudden, like, a horde, like an actual, like, horde of people. It was 11, 11 adolescent girls just, like, came in as one group. 11 people, and you should have seen, I wish you guys could have seen the waiter's eyes, because his eyes went so big, and he was just like, what am I going to do? <laughs> and so, like, they just kind of, like, started pushing together tables, and, like, they ended up pushing together three tables, and it, there wasn't room for this, and there was just so many of them, and, like, the restaurant went from, like, the only sound really was me and my boyfriend talking to the sound of 11 people all talking at a very fast, very high volume. <laughs> And it was just so intense and like my boyfriend and I just kept looking over at the group and at the waiter and just feeling so sorry for him because they were, you know, they were, you know, pretty well behaved, you know, like nothing, there's nothing wrong, obviously, with being an adolescent girl, but it was just like really overwhelming. It was a lot of people and like, <laughs> oh my gosh, it was just so crazy. Oh. <sighs> I don't know if that story was actually all that interesting once you tell it, but in the moment, 
like all my stories in the moment, it was a lot more exciting than when I actually go to tell it. But here I'm working on a little bedroom. I love how this turned out. I think it's so cute. It's a really small bedroom. There's not a lot to it, but I love this like blue and pink color scheme. I think it's adorable. This is the only room in the house that has um, a technically warm color wall, like pink, because the rest of them are either white or blue. So that was kind of exciting. But Oh my gosh, I ran out of breath. I need to go to more yoga so I can talk faster. That is the solution here. It's not that I should talk slower, guys. No, no, no. I need endurance training. I need to talk faster. I need to say more words and they need to all be even more irrelevant to the build. That is the goal. <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah. So um, this build ended up being four bedrooms. There's like a nursery downstairs, which I totally like talked over. Um, oh, five bedrooms because there's a nursery. There's like a kind of, I kind of imagine there's like a grandparent suite or like something. So it's a room. It's an adult room. Um, there's this room, the girl's room, this boy's room, which I love. And then a master bedroom. And when I say girls and boys rooms, obviously put whatever gender sim you want in there because does it, it doesn't matter you know. Anyways, but I love how kind of traditionally masculine I made this build, like this room feel, even though the like floors are a baby blue and the windows or the windows, the walls are like white. I like really kind of darkened it up and I added that camouflage in there and I just, oh, this room, I feel like it looks like it came out of PB teen, Pottery Barn teen. <laughs> very like like purposefully staged and like nobody has a room like this but it just looks so nice oh my gosh you know what I realized the other not the other day you know what I realized like a couple hours earlier honestly as I was editing this um I was kind of you know stuff but as I was editing I realized that my like tactic for interior design and layout is basically I take a room and I just line the walls with stuff like, you know, like it's just like a, a circle and then I leave the middle blank and every single wall has to have something up against it and it has to have some sort of decor piece like here, you know, every single wall looks just, just put stuff there. And so that's just how I do that. Apparently, like I and I realize that and I'm just like, oh, like no, like I don't like leaving corners empty. I don't like leaving spaces empty. Like it feels wrong to me somehow. I don't know. <laughs> I guess it's just because of I grew up in a mm, kind of cluttered home and that's how my home is right now like <laughs> I just thought that was so funny though like what am I doing <laughs> like that is my idea of a finished like complete build is if every like every like wall has something up against it so anyways genius builder over here kidding um but yeah oh god I need to drink water otherwise I'm gonna cough and it's gonna be really bad oh god Okay, I am back. Sorry about that. Oh gosh, I feel like I need to do it again. Ah, ha. Ah, okay. <laughs> I did end up coughing, kind of drink a lot of water, and like, I don't know, there's like a tickle in my throat, but this is the master bedroom, and I, I like how it turned out. I don't know, it's kind of, mm, I don't know. I, I, on the scale of like my least favorite bedroom to my most favorite bedroom, this would be a solid five, I think. It's pretty neutral you know, um, nothing too exciting, nothing too original. Um, every wall is covered with something, <laughs> basically. Um, I love the little mirrors that I put here. I thought that was a really cute little kind of almost rustic touch. I, I like that. This is sort of like set in the almost countryside. And so I like, I like how it turned out. Um, I don't end up showing any footage of any bathrooms, and then I also did a little, like, gym area that I didn't end up filming. But we are, um, actually at the mezuzah part now. So, mezuzah, what is that? Um, it is basically a, like, little plaque. Um, sometimes they will hold, like, paper in them. Sometimes they will just be paper, and it's always on the right side of an entrance, and it has, um sometimes just a phrase sometimes it has like whole verses and it's basically a blessing for the house and the idea is that you touch it as you go inside and um 
really technically you're supposed to have them in every single like sort of living and entryway so like you wouldn't have them to a bathroom or a closet or a cupboard but you'd have them to a bedroom a living room a kitchen dining room that sort of thing and you would always have them on the right side as you go into that space um and so I didn't do that for this build I just have it on out all of the outdoor entrances and what I used for it is I sized down the cutting boards that we got just because I I kind of wanted to use something with more words to it but eh, it just didn't quite fit and I wanted it to be like a little bit longer um more rectangular and everything was kind of square sorry I'm yawning I don't mean to okay hmm. But you can see here I'm decorating. Um, I mostly just use all these snowflakes and the snowflake lights. We don't have a huge amount of <laughs> Hanukkah themed things. We only have two. Um, we, I think, we, yeah, we have the menorah and we have the dreidel garland. So I wish we had more stuff, honestly. But, you know, it is pretty Christmas he heavy. And this year we got an update to the holiday pack and we got just Christmas stuff really it was like Christmas in Australia type stuff which is also cool and fun and I will be doing uh, I'm pretty sure I will be doing a build using those objects and it'll be fun you know but you know it's yeah <laughs> I'm just the complainer I would honestly the Sims team could like buy me the entire like everything like all of the sub packs all the game packs or refund me for them and i would still complain because i just that's just me but here i am starting on the landscaping you can see the snow mod is finally in effect i love how this turned out um some of the plants i used aren't affected by the snow mod those are ones that we got in um like game packs or stuff packs um and so you know, and so I kind of tried to cover up because I will, I love these blue flowers and I, you know, the snow mod, there's no flowers because that makes sense because it's winter, so no flowers, but because I have flowers in a different color, I basically tried to cover up how green the base was and I was like, I'm going to use flowers anyways because I want blue. <laughs> but yeah, oh my gosh, but so, so pretty. I did that whole like pool area in the back which looks gorgeous and I love how it turned out I of course didn't film it because like I was just trying to decide where I was gonna put this little like monkey bar and I was like this is taking too long we're pretty much done with this build let's just stop recording now and then I just kept changing stuff and changing stuff and changing stuff and then by the time I like was done I was like wow that was actually 30 minutes of pretty slightly important stuff oh well <laughs> Oh my gosh, but I'm, I haven't seen what this looks like without the snow mod on, so I'm kind of excited. Um, everything will be green again, but I made sure that all the swatches I picked out were white and blue, like, flower themes, so we'll see how that goes. I'm pretty excited, but I really hope that you guys enjoyed this build. If you did, feel free to give me a like, a comment, or subscribe, especially if you're interested in being notified as to when my next build is. I usually post every Saturday, but this got away from me, so who knows but <laughs> oh my gosh i hope you guys are all having a really great day here you can see the benches are disappearing or maybe not i cut that bit out but the benches disappeared this is the only one i could find that didn't so you know but <laughs> oh gosh i wish you all um a happy december a happy christmas a happy hanukkah happy whatever you celebrate it is all equally valid um anyways i will see you all next time bye
Short and thin, when when it is so tired, it drops in the 